so well, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to uh, to be back home for a while. So I'm going to tell you about uh, the world that sector. It's a paper. It's a based on these recent papers. Uh, one with Philippe Brax from, uh, from Paris, Philippe Tamedo from Riverside, another one with, uh, with Philippe and uh, his student from, uh, from Riverside too. Uh, so it, these are very recent papers. Um, there are upcoming works. So there are stuff I'm going to talk about which are kind of pre preliminary. Uh, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. So, Okay, so I'm going to tell you quickly about the motivation and context for, for the model. Then I'm going to tell you about some uh, theoretical uh, aspects which are kind of necessary for to well understand this uh, framework and to make to make a phenomenology. Uh, and I'm going to discuss uh, okay some phenomenology in a specific realization of the, the ID. So. Okay, so I, I will just just keep the usual uh, introduction about dark sector and so on. So yeah, I, a good part of the universe is uh, is dark. We don't know what it's, what what it's made of. Uh, it's a very good motivation to think about uh, a dark sector existing beyond the star model. Oops, yeah, so we don't care about that. And let me jump uh, directly to the model itself. So we uh, take a slice of, uh, of ADS. Uh, these are conformal coordinates. Okay, so this is this metric. This is the Z, Z uh, coordinates. So that's the fifth dimension. Uh, and we have uh, two brains. So the IR brain, the UV brain. They are not symmetric because uh, the metric is curved. Um, and the idea is to put the standard model on the, the UV brain, okay, here. Um, and uh, whatever lives in, in the bulk of the extra dimension or on the, the higher brain is uh, identified as a, as a dark sector. And we will see it kind of naturally gets the properties of, uh, of a light dark sector. Okay, so that's, that's very simple. That, that's the, uh, the basic idea. So I need to give some context. This is not like a random central model. Okay, so we put the star model on the, on the UV brain, on the IR brain. And we are not trying to solve the, the electroic hierarchy problem. Uh, this is more like a brain wall model, uh, but with matter in the bulk and, and, on the, and also the existence of the IR brain. And this is from where the, um, the interesting physics comes from. Uh, there has been model building with flat extreme dimension recently, uh, in dark sector model building, but uh, really this model, relies uh, crucially on, on the, the curvature of the extra dimension, so it's not, not really the same spirit. And there have been in the past a few works uh, with work, work extra dimensions, um, but uh, what was done in these uh, this references uh, is uh, also different, kind of different from uh, what we are doing. Uh, and finally, an extra motivation is, is that this, uh, so this ADS uh, model, it is Okay, so by, just by, by ADS CFT, uh, it can be seen as the, uh, the dual of a 4D strongly interacting dark sector. And so in a sense, uh, this, this proposal is it's kind of related to, uh, to the um, picture that, uh, that Adam was, was showing in, in his talk. Okay, okay, the scope will be different, but in the spirit, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit the same, uh, uh, same um, picture. Okay, so just to really insist on, on the motivation, uh, I can see, okay, like kind of three different uh, motivations to, like really to, to motivate the model. So one can really think of it really in terms of, uh, of extra dimensional uh, model building. And so, okay, just motivate it like that. Uh, one can see the model as uh, the holographic dual of some, uh, of some uh, appropriate uh, composite dark sector model or some composite with maybe composite dark matter, for instance. Um, and also from a, from a purely uh, phen phenological uh, viewpoint, that's also, I mean, that's also an extra motivation because it turns out that this, this kind of model uh, provides, uh, okay, phenology which is fairly different from the usual uh, okay, minimal dark sector paradigm. Okay. 
So I have, sorry, but I have to tell you about some uh, basic uh, technical stuff. So let's go through that. Uh, here we are assuming that the, the ADS background is stabilized. We care only about the QFT leaving this background. So it's a 5D QFT, so it's already an effective theory with a cutoff. Um, okay, we use, we use these coordinates, and we will work most of the time in, a, in this position one-ton space where the X coordinate is uh, fully transformed. Um, I will focus a lot on the, on the free propagator uh, expressed in this, in this coordinate. P is uh, the square root of the absolute momentum. So it can be, it's real for time-like for momentum or, or imaginary for, for space-like uh, for momentum. So that, that's, I have to say that, that's important for the following. Um, and uh, okay, so that's one form of the, of the propagator. Uh, the propagator has a, has a series of poles, okay, so the, the Kaiser Klein uh, mode. So, um, so a series of poles starting at, at the value mu and uh, spaced by, by um, by a, uh, have, uh, which have a spacing of order mu. So mu is the KK scale, the KZ Klein scale, and it's set by the uh, position of the, of the IR brain. Okay, so I have to say all of this. So now, um, so here's the first um, interesting property. Uh, the cutoff of the 5G EFT living in this, uh, in this ideas background, it is position dependent, okay, it's, it's z-dependent. Uh, and what happens is that the EFT tends to break down in the, in the IR, IR region, okay, so on this side. Um, and so, well, you can, to be convinced of that, you can really, I mean, check it explicitly by, by putting a higher dimensional operator, like, like this one, in your, in your 5G action. Um, and so when you do this and, and dress the propagator using that, uh, it turns out that this, this kind of higher dimensional, higher dimensional operator starts to dominate the propagator uh, at, uh, at a threshold, which is typically like that. Uh, and so, so for fixed, so Z is the endpoint which, we, which goes uh, the further in this direction. Uh, so at fixed, uh, Z, Z max here, uh, or let's say as fixed, uh, or let's say at fixed P, you have a, a threshold in the extra dimension, and beyond that, your, your, your EFT is not uh, just not valid anymore. So you have to be very, very careful with that. Um, and um, yeah, and for instance, this kind of reasoning applies to, to any KK mode. So whenever you think about the KK mode and with a high enough uh, for momentum. Um, there is a region where you, can, you are just not allowed to, to use your, your KK mode anymore. Okay, and this is not really new. Okay, this, this, was, this was noticed a, a long time ago. Uh, now, okay, so now I was talking about KK modes, but what about the full propagator? Um, in the region where, um, so in this, in this uh, IR region here, like typically here, the uh, propagator takes, well, it will be proportional to this, uh, this, uh, this form. Um, and so that's uh, quite interesting because, um, well, if P, so for, for space-like momentum, P is uh, imaginary. And so your propagator is just exponentially suppressed in this, uh, in this IR region. Uh, and more precisely, it, it starts, so the exponential suppression starts earlier than the, the, uh, the area, the, uh, the, the region where the, the EFT becomes invalid. Okay, so this is what I, uh, I draw here. Um, and, um, okay, so that's, uh, that's quite inspiring because, uh, first of all, well, looks like the, the region with, with invalid EFT just get censored because the, the, the propagators never reach it. You know, they, they drop before. Um, so that's, a, that's kind of a nice feature. And the uh, second important thing is that any field or, or oper operator or anything which is uh, localized on, on the IR brain, uh, it's effectively emergent from the viewpoint of, of your UV brain. Okay? Um, just because of, of this feature which is uh, described here. 
uh, and there is no such uh, such effect in a uh, in flat space. However, this is only for, for space-like momentum. So if we want to go further, we, we also have to think, to think about time-like momentum. Um, so for time-like momentum, it doesn't look so simple because you don't, here the, the P is real and you have a series of poles and you don't have your, your nice uh, exponential suppression which just kills the propagators in, in the infrared. Um, so what to do? Well, whenever you have, you, have, you have poles, you have to think about uh, interactions which will dress the, uh, the, the which will dress the propagator and uh, and smear out uh, the the poles. Okay, so just like in, just like in 4D, um, you have an imaginary contribution which will uh, smear smear your you your pole at uh, at loop level. So that's when you take into account interactions. So let's wonder what happens to this propagator. When we when we actually dress it with with interactions, so you have in principle brain localized interaction, okay, so brain localized dressing. Uh, however, it's not very interesting in this context because uh, this uh, this just just changes the, the boundary conditions of the propagator, and it turns out this this doesn't ch change this uh, this behavior. Instead, you get some things like uh, uh, like imaginary like imaginary brain localized masses, for instance. So what's really interesting is to think about uh, the, dress, uh, the, uh, the bulk interactions. Okay? And these uh, bulk interactions, they are always present because you always have uh, 5D gravity in the bulk, um, and which uh, in principle, I mean, which always interacts strongly with your, with your bulk field. So yeah, so it's always there. So OK, I'm, I'm going to pass quickly on all these things. <coughs> The, uh, the correct way to, to, uh, to go forward is to, to consider the, uh, the equation of motion for the, for the dressed propagator. Okay, so that's, that's uh, this, uh, uh, this equation uh, where this is the uh, completely generic uh, 1PI insertion which, which will dress your propagator. So, okay, that's one way of seeing it. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, can just notice that if you treat uh, this uh, insertion, this term, perturbatively, you recover exactly the, the geometric series representation of your propagator. Okay, so you, you do something, you do uh, an approach like that with, uh, by treating this perturbatively, and every term, every term will correspond to, to uh, one of your, uh, your terms in, your, in the geometric series. Okay. Um, so the, so the focus here is only on the imaginary part uh, of, of, the, of this uh, insertion, because it's the one we expect to have an effect on the, on the poles. Um, and uh, yeah, OK. And so OK, I focused uh, on, uh, on, the, on the case of cubic, uh, a cubic bulk interaction, like as a warm up. And this is the case of, uh, of really 5D gravity, so which conceptually is the same, but it's, it's much more technical. Um, and uh, I'm going to skip all, this, uh, all the details of the calculation because it's kind of annoying, and we just uh, jump to the conclusion. Um, so it turns out that at least for near strong coupling, so these are the, the bulk couplings, okay, um, the the exponential suppression in, in, the, in the infrared region uh, does occur, uh, where here in the exponential we have, uh, we have some, uh, some coefficient, which is, uh, which is very model dependent. But overall, the idea is that it will be, it's something which is not far from, from one, just, uh, okay, just for self-consistency of, of the calculation. Um, so that's uh, obtained when, okay, near strong coupling, at weaker coupling. It, the calculations are, are more difficult because you, okay, you have extra extra contributions that are kind of complicated. Um, but I, so a, a numerical uh, solving will be needed. Uh, however, I do expect the, the conclusions uh, remain at uh, at, uh, at weak opening. Okay, and so okay, so basically we have this picture, and just to repeat, the nice thing is that anything which is localized. On, the, on this near this IR brain is 
emergence from the viewpoint of, of uh, a UV, UV brain observer. All right. So now let's do some, uh, some simple uh, model building. So we take our slice of ADS, put dark matter on the, on the IR brain, okay? so direct dark, direct dark matter. Uh, and we put uh, a scalar. Yes? Sorry, I mean, um, it sounds to me like you're making a kind of a dramatic claim on the previous slide, which is that even for time-like momentum, once you take into account these sort of uh, but, decay type effects, that something that propagates into the bulk doesn't make it all the way into the infrared. Yeah, yeah, that's the claim. And, yeah. I, and I, I have to say that that doesn't sound right to me. And the reason it doesn't sound right is because you have a finite volume. And in finite volume, things don't actually decay, they just mix. So even what we call decay in infinite volume, if you put it in finite volume, it's just mixing. And physically, the, the, the infrared of ADS is the bottom of the potential. Just classically, everything falls down there. So I'm just saying that for me, it's, it sounds it just doesn't sound right. It sounds like you did a technical calculation, but there's something wrong. Yeah, OK. Well, we can, we can discuss uh, later on about that, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, what can I say? I stand by my, by my calculation so far, but I'm happy to, if you, if you find a conceptual mistake or something, I, I'm, it's great. Well, you uh, see that conceptually it's very mysterious, yes? That things don't reach the, in, the, things don't reach the infrared, even though classically that's just falling down a potential. But you're saying that quantum mechanically nothing reaches the center of ADS. So classically, yeah. uh, classically, I would say so. If you throw some uh, some radiation, for instance, towards the, the higher brain, um, your your density of uh, like your local density of energy will uh, become transplantian before reaching the higher brain. So in any case, you are you are you are break you are um, uh, the EF the five D EFT is uh, is violated before reaching the uh, the I agree. Sorry? The EFT has nothing to do with classical physics. Marcus is asking you classically. I'm sending a particle from the UV to the AR classically. I'm sending a particle. Are you telling me that it will never reach the infrared classically? Or quantum mechanical classically? So uh, I, would, I would say you. So the. the the energy density becomes transplantian. Transplantian so. doesn't mean anything in classical physics. Right. You form a black hole, basically, or something like that. You know? Something has to occur. I mean, that's the, so that's the usual reasoning uh, when, when, you, when people talk about the, okay, this kind of picture at a finite temperature. Um, they. Um, Surely that's not what this effect, you're not claiming that this effect is somehow some nonlinear effect of producing black holes, exiting the effective field theory. I mean, it looks exactly the opposite. It looks like you're just beautifully shielding yourself from all of that. So uh, it doesn't seem like, a, that seems like a yet another thing. That, but it doesn't explain this, this, this result here. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not saying it explains this. Huh? We were okay. We were just fixing up at the uh, conceptual level. Um, well, the. Um, Absolutely, this is an effective theory and it can break down for certain processes. But I, that's a different thing from this. This is saying that within the effective theory, claiming the things that you throw towards the IR brain just don't make it there. They, they bounce back, right? That's what, that's what would happen if you have oh, an they, extended compression. It's like a mirror. No, no, they, they don't, they don't uh, bounce back. They don't bounce back. They, they just 
and the probability itself just vanishes. But there's no, there's no notion of, uh, of like bouncing back. This is not like an, uh, an effective brain or something like that. It's just like a conductor sending an electromagnetic wave in the conductor does exactly that. And that's what that's what and that's why they bounce back because they can't go inside. So when you actually set up the boundary conditions, that's what happens. Mm. Okay, maybe do I continue? Yeah, oh, we, continue let's let's continue. Talk. Let's I discuss later. Talk, all right, all right. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I was saying uh, bulk mediator coupled to uh, dark matter and to, to quarks on the, the uh, UV brain. So your action looks like that. And this. Um, this is the, uh, the bulk mass of the, the scalar, which is very important because it controls the, the localization of the, uh, the bulk field and how it couples to the, to, the, uh, to the UV brain. Okay, so I, um, there are essentially two parameters which, which matter here. One is the, the IR scale. Okay, so the scale of KK modes, essentially it just sets the whole, uh, whole scale of the dark sector. And the other parameter is this, uh, is this alpha, which is related to, to the mass of the bulk field. Um, and, uh, okay, as I was saying, it controls the localization of the bulk field and how it couples to, to the UV brain. And that's it. That, that's really what we, we, uh, we care about. So just for, for completeness, uh, I have to say that okay, we also have a brain localized mass, brain localized, uh, mass terms. The one on the IR brain is, is okay, mostly irrelevant for, for phenology. Uh, the one on the UV brain, in, for this model, in this case, we are presenting here, uh, it is tuned to, is, to a, a special value, the value for which you would have an exponentially light mode for alpha larger than one. But here, we focus is on alpha smaller than one, so there is no exponentially light, exponentially light mode in this case. Okay. Um, so, so what happens? So for p uh, much uh, smaller than than new, p smaller than new. Uh, okay, we just integrate out all the KK modes. We get a 4D uh, dark matter effective theory um, with uh, with uh, local operators uh, between the, the standard model and the, and the dark sector. Okay, so this kind of uh, of effective Lagrangian. Uh, there is a hierarchy in the, in the couplings, so the dark sector, dark sector operators, they are strongly coupled. Okay. Uh, here, this kappa, this lambda, they, they are order one, and the, and the cutoff of the, of the EFT is mu. Okay, so here you can see that that's, um, that's a strong self-interaction. Um, and the couplings between the dark, the dark sector and the standard model uh, are... are uh, uh, they are exponentially suppressed depending on the, on the localization of the bulk field. Uh, and so this is the one between start model and dark sector. Uh, and uh, okay, that, that can be nice for, to motivate a very tiny coupling for if you want to make uh, dark matter freezing, for instance. So now in the 5D regime, uh, the, uh, okay. Basically, the dark matter vanishes from, from all your amplitudes. Uh, and the setup can be like, described equivalently by a, uh, by a model without IR brain and just your standard model on the UV brain and, and a bulk, uh, bulk mediator. Um, and so, for instance, if you have a, a, like, a nuclear and dark matter uh, scattering for P, small, for P larger than you, uh, you have uh, uh, this uh, exponential separation of the amplitude. Okay, so there is also, so in this limit, there is an, uh, there is an exact holographic dual to, to the picture, uh, but okay, I don't need to, to comment too much about that. So, okay, so I will go through this very quickly. Uh, the, uh, the claim then is that at uh, so regarding dark matter phenol, okay, dark matter complementarity, 
direct detection and direct detection, they are, they are not much affected by, by the picture because you, are, you have uh, momentums which are of order mu or smaller than mu. Uh, but there is a change for, uh, for momentum uh, for energies uh, larger than mu, uh, where you, um, well, the, expo the exponential separation um, appears. And what one expects, what expects is that the, uh, the, the missing it and distribution in the collider will have, will be cut um, at a, a scale of uh, order mu. Okay. So, um, right, so do we have a, there are a bunch of, uh, of um, interesting uh, signatures in, in, this, in this framework. Okay, so exotic field forces, non-standard momentum losses, periodic signals colliders, stack radiation, uh, soft spherical events, sometimes sometime called uh, soft domes. And also you have uh, all aspects about, about a dark phase, dark phase transition. Uh, and uh, for today, I'm going to discuss only about uh, a few of the other things. So, um, well, if you're standard, so in the 5D regime, if your standard model fields exchange a, a bulk field, um, well, it generates a, a long distance, long range force uh, between the between your, your nucleons. Uh, and this long range force, you, you compute it by, by taking the Fourier transform of your propagator in the, in the uh, non relativistic limit. Uh, and so what you get is a, is a non integer force, okay? a force with a non integer behavior in the, in the distance between, between the nucleons. Um, and so from, from on this, one can put plenty of bounds from, uh, from torsion pendulum experiments, Casimir experiments, molecules, uh, neutron. Uh, the neutron experiments, and so on. So I have a plot in the, in the next slide. Uh, another fun thing in the, the, the 4D regime uh, is that okay, if you have a, a light enough degree, degree of freedom on your, on your higher brain, so here it's this, uh, this phi I put here, um, you, uh, you expect a... Uh, a force, but which appears only in this in this 4D regime, so we can call this an, an emergent force. Um, and so, a nice example is a, is the one where one uh, when we just mix the bulk field with the, the higher brain field. Okay, so this can be treated exactly um, by uh, by dressing the propagator. Um, and so, your propagator in the presence of this uh, of this higher higher brain field uh, looks like that. So in the 4D regime, all your, your deltas here, so these are propagators, so they, they become constant. And what you get is a, is a 4D propagator. So it, it means you, you get a Yukawa force in the 4D regime. Uh, while in the, in the 5D regime, uh, this, uh, this propagator vanishes, always the center way, always the center way because of this, uh, uh, what uh, we call opacity of the, the IR region. And we end up only with uh, the 5D regime with, uh, with uh, the, okay, basically the, the force in the 5D regime. So there is a nice interpolation between the two regimes. Okay, so to give you an example, uh, here is a parameter space with mu on the x-axis and uh, the alpha parameter, okay, the, the parameter controlling the localization of the bulk field. Uh, and so here are the, uh, the bounds. Okay. So torsion pendulum, Casimir, neutron scattering, molecules, and so on. I also include the stellar cooling. Um, and so uh, a fun thing to see is that, okay, here I'm parameterizing, parameterizing the, the, dark, the dark sector standard model coupling with this, uh, this lambda coefficient. So it's something which is predicted by the, by the model okay, in, the 4D, uh, in the 4D effective theory. Uh, and it uh, turns out that 
one can have values values of lambda fairly uh, fairly low, okay, even lambda as a GV, um, and uh, still have uh, a low energy effective array, which uh, evades the uh, uh, the experiments. Um, and so that's kind of nice because because okay, sometimes uh, people need people use. 4D FTS, but with very low cutoff, for, inst for instance, in, a, in all this uh, modified gravity business. Um, and that gives a, uh, a well defined uh, UV compression to, to these kind of models. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, so, I don't have much time, so I will just focus on, on this one. Um, at colliders, we're still considering the same process. Uh, a nice signature is that uh, you expect a signal with uh, periodic bumps uh, and dips. Um, so these are basically the KK mode. Okay? You also have dips because there is a collective interference between, uh, between all the vehicle electron modes. Something you can see easily with the uh, closed form of the propagator, but if you look at, if you think in terms of uh, colliders electron modes, you will have uh, you will need like, crazy uh, cancellations to okay, to see this uh, this uh, dips occurring. Uh, so all the details of the, of the shapes that they really depend depend on the uh, um, on the dressing of the propagator by by uh, the bulk and, uh, and the brain interactions. Um, here I'm showing the cross section like the BSM squared. Uh, uh, contribution to the cross section, but in principle, you also have an, uh, an interference between standard model and, and BSM, and you expect the same kind of, of pattern. Um, and the, the fun thing is that if you want to look for this kind of signal, uh, typically you have to take some kind of Fourier transform of your of your of your uh, differential distribution, or more precisely, a uh, wavelet transform. And this was discussed. Uh, Quite recently in the, these two papers, and uh, so yeah, that's it. So we, this, uh, so this signature was okay. It was uh, first pointed out in, in the linear dilaton model, and here with this uh, this uh, model, we, we bring extra extra motivation for for this. Okay, so I guess I will just conclude. Um, so a work actually mentioned naturally gives rise to dark star physics. It's uh, constitutively simple, and uh, that's also motivated by, by the ADS, uh, oh yeah, motivated as the ADS dual of, uh, of a composite dark sector. Uh, if dark matter or whatever else is on the higher brain is effectively emergent, and it vanishes from the ampli amplitudes uh, at, uh, at high enough energy. Um, and okay, this has uh, phenomenological implications, of course. Uh, the model features a variety of exotic signatures. So we, you have fifth forces, non-standard stellar cooling, invisible meson decays, and so on. So yeah, there are plenty of observables to, to use, to bounds. Um, and so yeah, so as the LHC, for instance, we, uh, one expects this, uh, these periodic signals and uh, vanishing missing, missing ET at high enough uh, High enough energy. Um, so it, these are very recent work. There are plenty of developments we, which have, uh, we still have to be done. done. Uh, we are currently working on, uh, on bulk cascade de decays, and then there will be a work on dark radiation, on, on modified gravity, and also other, other, <laughs> other things. Um, so, well, I'm happy, happy to discuss about all that, of course. Collaborations are welcome. Um, and um, yeah, well, let me know if you are interested. That's it. Thank you very much. Comments? Questions? So you put the standard model on the UV brain, right? So, okay, so you don't solve the hierarchy problem? Yeah, sure. Okay. So why do you say that the dark sector appears naturally in that case? Because in the in the bulk, 
you have gravitational, well, the gravitational sector uh, in principle. Yeah, uh, of course. Oh, you always, oops. You are, always have 5G gravitons in the bulk. But what was the question? No, you are claiming that uh, the dark sector appears naturally in this in this case. So you are thinking on I, I, dark appears dark. naturally. Well, I mean, you, you have to put it. You have to put your fields, of course, by by hand in the model. They just just don't appear like that, of course. So, so the dark sector normally you are putting it on the IR brain or yeah on the IR brain, and then yeah, you, well, are, you are putting some. Uh, bulk uh, fields, which are, say, messengers or whatever, between observable and the dark sector? Is that the... So you, you have some messengers in the bulk, no? Some? Some messengers. Some messengers. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, bulk. sure. So you are putting some uh, scalars in the bulk? Yeah, yeah, like, for instance, my, my, my phi, phi uh, bulk field I was writing, it's essentially a, a mediator, a messenger. Mediator, right. okay. And the dark sector in the, on the IR brain? Yeah, well, the whole thing, then you call them dark sector usually, but yes. Okay, okay. Okay, so oh, thank you. Further questions? So can you be more specific about the dark sector? What, what, the, what are the characteristics? And uh, did you compute the ab abundance, for instance, of this dark matter candidate? <laughs> So this kind of phenol things we okay we did we did some but really it's not uh, not detailed uh, yet okay it's part of the future things to do uh, we so on on my plot here oops we so here we show the region where you could have a freeze out so assuming a dark matter mass of order mu. Um, there is also, okay, we also made an estimate for, for freezing. Okay, so we have this kind of little things, but it's not like a super detailed uh, phenol. So what is N, capital N, in that Lagrangian? Nucleons. Huh? Nucleons. So it couples to neutrons only? Nucleons only? Oh, yeah, well, it's just in this case, we assume uh, coupling to quarks, and so you have uh, coupling to nucleons. So uh, all nucleons, of course, at, uh, below the, the QCD scale. So that's why you, are, you have a, a bunch of fifth force uh, constraints. Further questions, comments? No? So let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> Lunch break, and we convene at 3 p.m. <laughs>